Well, a week ago on Tuesday, we sat here and talked about how there was a huge game looming for Pitt. Going to be a great game. Going to be a you know just a game that should garner some national attention, not just for its bubble implications, but for the caliber of the teams playing. It should inevitably lead to a really good, really competitive game. That's what we talked about last Tuesday, and then we all watched last Tuesday night and buzzer sound. But here we are again. It's a Tuesday. We're talking about a game that's going to have national interest due to its bubble implications and what should be a pretty good game, a pretty competitive game between two pretty good teams. Is there going to be another buzzer sound? I don't know, but it's a huge game looming for Pitt as the Panthers go to Clemson tonight to take on the Tigers. I'm looking forward to it. I think you probably are too. So let's get ready for it right here on the morning pit on youtube.com slash pantalaircom. It's a Tuesday edition of the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. It's a game day edition of the Morning Pit here on youtube.com slash pantalaircom. Always look forward to these, getting ready for the game, getting a little hyped, getting a little excited. 7 p.m. tip-off for the Panthers as they go to Clemson tonight. A rematch of a game back in uh, December, that weird orphan ACC game. Clemson came to the Peterson Event Center and beat Pitt. A um, lot of sort of angles from that game. Not sure how many of them will apply, but a couple will apply for tonight's game and we'll see kind of how that carries over it's a seven o'clock game as opposed to last week that wake forest game a nine o'clock game so you get a little bit uh you know maybe that works a little bit better in Pitt's favor uh to have it at seven o'clock but there's a lot of angles for this game a lot of elements a lot of factors to consider a lot of strains to keep in the old duder's head so let's jump into it but of course we always have to ask you to like and subscribe like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com slash Panther Laracom, where we do a lot of stuff. I mean, really, the schedule lays out like Monday through Friday. We have morning pit videos. It's just every day of the week, this this pit talk right here to get your day started. We have our uh, weekly live show that we do every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We'll have that tomorrow night with me and Jim Hammett and comments and questions from you. Plus, we have our live post-game show, which we'll do uh, after every road game, which means tonight. So when Pitt Clemson ends, we will be live right here on YouTube.com slash Panther hoping somewhere around 9.15 ideally it would be earlier than that possibly could be later if the game runs late and and sometimes it's not even about the game running late it's about the game starting late because espn uh moves things around although seven o'clock game we should be in good shape shouldn't be any games i don't think there'll be any games before that so this one should tip off right on time uh and then, like I say, after the game, we'll come over here and hang out and talk about it on youtube.com slash And those the post game shows are always fun to do um largely because i mean just because we sit down and talk about the game you know what i mean like i tell you what i thought about the game and you get in the comments and questions in the, you get in the chat screen and share your comments and questions with what you thought about the game we have kind of a back and forth it's a talk show and uh it's a lot of fun to do for a half hour 45 minutes an hour however long it takes to talk about what we saw from Pitt Clemson, and I think we'll all be watching very intently for sure. And then don't forget the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You find it all at pantherlair.com and message boards that interact with hundreds and thousands of other Pitt fans. All day, every day, Pitt fans are talking about Pitt sports on the message boards at pantherlair.com. And if you're a Pitt fan, you like to talk to other Pitt fans, the best place to do it is right there on the message boards at pantherlair.com. Panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com to get all the pit coverage and all the pit community. So pit Clemson tonight. I should have had the uh the um the betting line pulled up, but I didn't because I'm just not ahead of the game. Uh I'm I'm assuming that Pitt is uh not favored in this game uh, i would not expect them to be the favor going on the road uh, against clemson uh, there it is um, now they don't have the betting line on espn all right screw it who cares Pitt's not the favorite right i mean we're not going to assume Pitt is a favorite Pitt's 18 and 9 overall 9 and 7 in the acc clemson 19 and 8 overall 9 and 7 in the acc both teams, of course, met back in early December. At that point, Pitt was five and two. Clemson was six and zero. Oh. Since then, Pitt has gone thirteen and seven. Clemson has gone thirteen and eight. Not a lot of difference there. Both teams have been playing pretty even. Um, net ranking a pretty significant difference. Clemson inside the top thirty. Pitt inside the top sixty. 
Uh, Ken Pomeroy has Clemson quite a bit higher than Pitt uh, on a number of levels, largely due to Clemson's adjusted offense. Defense, both of these teams are pretty even, according to Ken Palm. Uh, but offensively, which is funny because I, I don't think we tend to think of this team as having offensive issues, this Pitt team, although certainly they are prone to droughts from time to time, which we always document. Uh, but Ken Pomeroy has Pitt at number 57 in the nation in adjusted offense and Clemson at number 18 in the nation at adjusted offense. And and the biggest thing with Clemson, well, not the biggest thing, uh, there are a lot of big things with Clemson's offense, but the biggest thing that I'm going to be watching tonight, the thing that's most important and relevant, and, and I think sets up to be a far more interesting and compelling matchup, maybe even than it was in the first game, is going to be Clemson's three-point shooting. The Tigers have made the second most three-pointers in the ACC so far this season. You know who made the most. It's Pitt. Uh, but in that game at Pitt, Clemson went 11 of 30 from three. Uh, Pitt only made eight three-pointers. Uh, Joe Girard led the charge, of course, six of nine from three. Uh, he's averaging more than three three-pointers per game. He's shooting 42.5% from three. He's averaging 15.8 points per game. Clemson shoots the three. They make a lot of threes. Uh, like I say, the second most in the ACC. And that sets up as a really, really interesting matchup because Pitt right now has the number one three-point defense in the conference in terms of, of field goal percentage defense, three-point field goal percentage defense. Pitt is at the top, holding opponents under 30% shooting from outside. So you have a team that shoots a high volume of threes and makes a lot of threes. You really have two teams that fit that bill, but you know, particularly you have Clemson that shoots a lot of threes and makes a lot of threes going against Pitt, who has been defending beyond the arc really well of late. In six of the last seven games, Pitt's opponents have made six or fewer three-pointers. And not surprisingly, in those six games where Pitt's opponents made six or fewer three-pointers, the Panthers are 6-0. and uh, and, and that's sort of the first of a number of stats that I'm going to look at here that, uh, you know, maybe something, maybe nothing. And, uh, you know, you can always make stats do whatever you want them to do. You can kind of craft whatever story or whatever tale you want to come up with based on the stats. But I got a handful of things here that Pitt is undefeated when these things happen. A minimum of like 4-0, 5-0, 6-0 type of thing on the season. Now, that three-point stat uh, is, uh, you know, one that's really just over the last seven games that Pitt is 6-0 and when they hold their opponents um, to six or fewer made three pointers in a game. And, and the reason that I don't look at the whole season numbers on that is that Syracuse, the game at Syracuse, and then the game against North Carolina, those two teams made like seven, three pointers combined. I think Syracuse made three and North Carolina made four. Uh, those were games that Pitt lost for other reasons than, uh, their, their three point defense. I think Pitt's three point defense has gotten a lot better recently as evidenced by the numbers. And part of that is the teams they've faced, but Virginia Tech is a good, talented, efficient three-point shooting team, and Pitt was really good against them, 3 of 20 from beyond the arc. I think they've been defending really well out there. That's a credit to, obviously, the guards, Bob Carrington and Jalen Lowe and Ishmael Leggett. Uh, but I think overall, they, they've been handling outside shots uh, much better defensively. Now, they're going to have a huge challenge with Joe Girard tonight. There's no question. Like I say, he was 6 of 9 from 3. And, and he's he's deadly out there. He's a sniper. He's out, you know I already mentioned he's averaging more than three three-pointers per game. That's roughly right around, I think Blake Henson's right around three or four three-pointers per game. Um, Gerard is every bit the threat from outside that Henson is, if not quite as uh, chaotic as Henson. Pitt didn't do a good job defending him the first game, and they're going to have their hands full trying to stop him tonight he's not the only player they're going to have their hands full trying to stop but he's a big one that they are going to have their hands full trying to stop but some other stats we'll, we'll talk about a few of Clemson's weapons in a minute but some other stats to keep an eye on for tonight things that Pitt is undefeated when they do these things in a game uh, that was a terrible sentence that I just said but I, I guess that's proof that I'm not reading off a of paper right that I don't have this whole thing written down all I've got is a big scribbled sheet of stats and things like that uh, things that have been pretty much surefire for Pitt this season. So when Pitt, uh, let's say when Jalen Lowe has five or more assists in a game this season, Pitt is 6-0. and And I mean, two of those six games were South Carolina State and Jacksonville, but he had five or more assists against Virginia Tech, Louisville, Notre Dame, and at Duke. 
Six and zero when Jalen Lowe has at least five assists. Pitt is five and zero, and this is an interesting one. Pitt is five and zero when Federico Federico is the team's leading rebounder. I think that's interesting. Five and zero when Federico is the team's leading rebounder. And it's not just about like what number he hits; it's about him leading the team in rebounds, which I think implies a certain volume, right? I mean, you got to you're gonna have to be at six or seven or above in order to lead a team in rebounding. But five and zero when Federico leads the team in rebounding, and all five of those games, all right, Federico has has led Pitt in rebounding really six times, but one time he he shared the lead, so. As the sole leader in rebounding, Federico has only done it five times. Now, I mean, there's something to be said about the fact that your starting center has only led your team in rebounding five times in 27 games. But all five of those games have been ACC games. The game at Georgia Tech, the home game against Wake Forest, the Notre Dame game, the game at NC State, and the home game against Louisville. In those five games, he's averaged 8.4 rebounds per game. And obviously... You know, some of those are, are relatively recently, just in the last few weeks. And you could have a little sort of a uh, sub stat here, but I'm not going to include it because, uh, you know, I, I just want to talk about the things that Pitt is undefeated when they do these things. Uh, but Pitt is 6-1 and one when Federico has at least six rebounds in an ACC game. Maybe something, maybe nothing. But it's huge tonight. Okay, it's huge tonight that Federico leads the team in rebounds and plays really well because Ian Shefflin, the the big from Clemson, had 17 rebounds in the game at Pitt in December. He's averaging 9.3 rebounds per game. He's one of the top rebounders in the ACC, and rebounds were a big difference in that game at the Peterson Event Center. Final tally, Clemson 40 hit 33. Clemson had 12 second chance points. They grabbed 11 offensive rebounds. They limited Pitt's offensive opportunity, offensive rebound opportunities. Federico Federico needs to lead the team in rebounding tonight. He needs to have a big game rebounding wise. And again, those five games, like I said, when he's led the team in rebounding in, in ACC games this year, those five games, he's averaged 8.4 rebounds per game. I think Federico has been playing a lot better lately. You know, I think there was a real stretch there where he wasn't playing well at all, where he was a liability. He was almost borderline unplayable at times. I think he's been playing better, somewhat offensively, uh, but I think he's been he's been also he's been playing a lot better defensively, and he needs to keep improving on the rebounds. Now that's getting offensive rebounds and certainly trying to minimize the number of defense or trying to minimize the number of offensive rebounds that Clemson is able to grab. Shefflin had seven offensive rebounds among his 17 boards. Seven offensive rebounds. You can't give up seven offensive rebounds to one guy. And so that's going to be Federico's challenge tonight. But when he leads the team in rebounds, Pitt is 5-0. and Here's another one. Pitt is 5-0 and when Bub Carrington makes at least three three-pointers in a game. Now, I've gone back and forth on Bub Carrington's efficiency. I've gone back and forth on how much he should shoot and how he should shoot and where he should shoot. Uh, you know, there was a, a, a long period of time early this season where we talked about Bub Carrington just needs to drive, 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 drive. He needs to go to the hoop and either kick the ball out or finish at the basket. Uh, and I still think that's you know where he can really make his money. I, I'm pretty well convinced on those pull-up jumpers. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite to Jamari's Burton level with him but i'm pretty well convinced that okay bub carrington feels comfortable getting those those mid-range jumpers take them but i'd also like to see him keep going to the hoop at the same time when he's made at least three three pointers in a game Pitt is five and oh his shooting does have a pretty significant impact on the team and while we've been quick to say and we've said often that no one player shoulders the blame for the wake forest game last week it's undeniable that bub carrington went three of 13 from outside it wasn't his night shooting. He did other things well, but he wasn't shooting very well. I think he played great in the second half, and and only the second half at Virginia T against Virginia Tech because he only played five minutes in the first half. But I thought he was great in the second half. Scored seven points. If he ends up with fourteen points tonight, uh, and if he can, I think he had one three pointer that he made in the that second half of the Virginia Tech game. If he can get three three pointers and fourteen plus points, I think Pitt's going to be in great shape 
for this game tonight. Uh, Bub Carrington's a big piece of this team, as always, and as he has been all season. And they're going to need him to play really well tonight. His defense is going to be huge. His defense, whether he's on P.J. Hall or trying to mark uh, you know, Joe Girard, whoever it might be. I think Ishmael Leggett will draw that assignment a lot. Um, Jalen Lowe might end up out there on Girard, depending on what lineup Pitt has on the court. Uh, but that's going to be huge. And, and I think Carrington has played really good defense this year and gotten better over the course of the season. Uh, he's going to have to keep improving, and he's going to have to play a really strong defensive game tonight and then pick and choose those spots where he shoots threes. But you know they're going to be focusing the defense on Blake Henson, which means Carrington, Jalen Lowe, Ishmael Leggett are going to have opportunities to, uh, to get shots from outside. And then one more undefeated stat and this is only you know 4-0 it's only four games out of 27 but Pitt is 4-0 oh, actually it's, it's less than 27 it's four games out of nine actually because this is an on the road record Pitt is 4-0 when Ishmael like it attempts at least four free throws on the road now did I have to dig for that stat a little bit? Yeah, I did, but I wanted to find something else. You know, we have Bub, Bub Carrington, the three-pointers, Federico, the rebounds, uh, Joe and Lowe, the assists, and uh, I wanted to find one for Leggett, and it's free throws on the road. When he attempts at least four free throws on the road, Pitt is 4-0. Now, that's only nine games. They've only played nine road games. And so four out of those nine games, Leggett has gotten to that number, that four-plus free throws. Uh, he got it at West Virginia, at Duke, at Georgia Tech, and at Virginia. Two of Pitt's biggest wins. I mean, not, not two of Pitt's biggest wins. Pitt's two biggest wins this season. Ishmael Leggett shot at least four free throws, and uh, and Pitt ultimately won. Now, all these things, we're talking about 5-0, and 6-0, and 4-0. and We're not talking about huge sample sizes. Leggett close to half the games. The other guys all like less than one-sixth of the games. So it's not exactly like something you can, um, I, I don't know, you, you wouldn't call it a big sample size. But I do think if they go out there and Bub Carrington makes three or more three-pointers, and if Feder, Federico Federico leads the team in rebounding, and Jalen Lowe has at least five assists, and Ishmael Leggett attempts at least four free throws, particularly for what that means about the way Leggett is playing and the way he's attacking and who he's likely drawing fouls on uh, and where he's drawing those fouls, yeah, I think Pitt's going to have a great chance to win. So that's what they have to do. They, Write these four things down, all right? The four factors. Here, here's our new four factors. We talked about four factors in terms of economics last week. That is the end of our academic talk here on the Morning Pit. And so we got these four factors for tonight. Bob Carrington, three plus three-pointers. Federico Federico leading the team in rebounds. Jalen Lowe, five plus assists. And Ishmael Leggett, four plus free throw attempts. Because, look, I mean, Blake Henson's got to be Blake Henson. You need Blake Henson to do what Blake Henson does uh, in order to give you a chance to win, right? I mean, he's got to draw that that attention. He's got to have that gravity, and he's got to make a bunch of shots. Um, but those other guys around him, they, they've had their moments where they do things really well. And when they do those things, it often ends up being good for Pitt. Big challenge, though, for sure. P.J. Hall. One of the top scorers in the ACC right now, averaging almost 19 points per game. He's shooting 50% from the field. Joe Girard, like I said, averaging almost 16 points per game. He's shooting 43% from three. And Ian Shefflin, averaging more than nine rebounds per game. He had 17 against Pitt. Pitt has to be able to rebound better. And I'm pointing at Federico here, but Zach Austin, Ishmael Leggett, Blake Henson. Like, how about Blake Henson, who was Pitt's leading rebounder last season, gets a little more involved on the glass. Um, this is a huge game. This is a huge game. And we talked about bubble implications. I don't know if we need to go too far down that road again, but this is a huge game for Pitt uh, it, to, to put themselves you know, back, back in contention. And, and I don't know if they're necessarily out of contention, but right now they have to keep winning in order to keep themselves in contention for the NCAA tournament. Uh, this, this is a big one. This is a, a chance for Pitt to get a fourth quad one win. Um, you know, and right now I think they're five and seven in quad one, quad two games combined. Getting to four and seven would look, or getting to six and seven, excuse me, would look really, really good 
Uh, and then they have a, you know the game on Saturday at Boston College is another quad two game. So you have a chance to even your record at seven and seven in quad one and quad two games. Uh, building that resume, getting more and more impressive, going on the road and knocking off a top 30 team, that would be huge. That would be huge. Not to mention improving Pitt's road record to 7-3, and three, which is one of the best in, you know, in the country. I mean, right now, no Power 5 team has more than seven road wins this season. Pitt has a chance to have more than seven by the end of this week. Got to get this one tonight. I don't think losing this game completely cancels their, op- their chances of making the tournament. But it gets a lot harder. Winning, on the other hand, really helps open that path up. Can't wait. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun to watch. And don't forget, we'll be live after the game right here on YouTube.com slash Pantheleracom. Looking at about 9.15 start, somewhere around there. Hopefully a little bit earlier if the game ends sooner. But we'll start later if we have to. And it will be right here at YouTube.com slash Pantheleracom. So like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you won't miss any of our pit video content whether it's a morning pit video or weekly live stream or the post game show and we'll have lots of coverage right there panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com for all of your pit sports news and coverage all right pit fans i hope you had a great monday enjoy your tuesday try to count down the hours try not to uh get too anxious but it's a big one tonight i can't wait i'm sure you're excited too so we'll see you uh after the game tonight for the Panther Lair post game show, and then we'll talk to you tomorrow for the morning pit right here on youtube.com slash Panther